this is David D. Six, senior writer for Golf Week Magazine. Welcome once again to the Winter Circle. Today I'm joined by Chris Tooten, one of the lead tour reps for Titles. How are you doing today, Chris? I'm doing great, David. Good to see you. It's good to see you too. Thanks a lot. I'm sure it's been pretty exciting out there in Greensboro where you are right now because obviously Jason Duffner has won the 2013 PGA Championship. Let me give you a quick list, folks, of all the stuff that was in Jason's bag that he used up there at Oak Hill. Jason's driver was a Titleist 910D2 with 9.5 degrees of loft and a Mitsubishi Diamana Ahina 60X shaft. His fairway wood was a Titleist 913F with 13.5 degrees of loft. He also had an 18 degree uh, 5 wood in there. The 3 wood had an Aldola VS Proto 70X shaft, while the 5 wood had a Mitsubishi Diamana Alima 80X shaft. Jason carried a Titleist 913H hybrid with 19 degrees of loft and a Project X PXI 6.5 shaft. His irons were the new Titleist 714AP2s, a 4 iron through pitching wedge, and those also had the Project X um, PXI 6.5 shaft. His wedges were a Titleist Vokey Design SM4 54 degree sand wedge and a Vokey Design TVD K Grind 60 degree lob wedge. And those had true tempered dynamic gold spinner shafts. Jason's putter was a Titleist uh, Scotty Cameron Circa 62 number 6 prototype. And Jason's ball is a Titleist Pro V1. Now, Chris, I want to talk to you a little bit about the irons. Obviously, Jason was you know, out there hitting some one great iron shot after another. What can you tell me about the new 714 AP2s that Jason has in his bag? I understand he switched to them pretty recently. He switched to them. We worked Monday morning at, uh, at Akron, and the changes that he made, he uh, initially when we designed the, the new sole on the iron, it has a little bit more radius and a little softer leading edge, and Jason had a lot to do with that design. Uh, in his previous models, we always used to do a little pre-wear grind on his leading edge, and <clears throat> that was kind of the, the lead-in to the way the soles were going to be for the 714. So Monday morning at Akron, we went out with the track man and, and got all the numbers that we were looking for. And Instantly, when Jason, his, his initial feedback with turf interaction was positive, uh, he went out on the golf course, had a great week, and uh, you know when Jason doesn't say anything to you, uh, you know everything's going well. So uh, Jason gave us uh, great feedback, said everything was wonderful, and you know once he does that, we just kind of back off and let him play. And uh, He had a tie, tied for fourth at Akron and then a win last week, so we know we're doing the right thing. Yeah. One of the things I think a lot of amateur players probably look at first is the back of the club, how pretty it is. Maybe they look at how thin or how thick the, the top line is. Talk to me about how important the sole and the camber and the bounce that are built into irons. We don't usually think, or amateurs probably don't usually think about that stuff as it relates to their irons, but obviously from what you're saying, the professionals do, and it's pretty important for them. Well, it, you know, every time you, you hit an iron shot, you're going to uh, come in contact with the ground. So whatever type of uh, grind that you have on the bottom of your sole it is going to give you uh, ball flight characteristics, it's going to give you feedback through your hands, and it's going to have uh, a... A uh, effect on how your ball shot is. Uh, Jason likes to have a little shaft lean at impact, where his his the grip of his club would be past impact. So anytime you got a sharp leading edge for Jason, uh, the club can get a little sticky through impact, meaning it's a little it slows down through impact. And what we're always trying to do with Jason is get a sole grind uh, that speeds up through impact, that doesn't slow down too much. It 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 goes through the turf enough to have compression on the ball, but yet does not slow down too much. So um, all those uh, things factor into uh, the the types of clubs that we have for our tour players out here and, and the types of iron play that, that our guys are looking for. I had a chance to speak, Chris, with Jason immediately after he shot that 63 on Saturday, obviously tying the, the lowest score ever shot in a major championship, setting the course record under tournament conditions at Oak Hill. He told me that he has worked, obviously, extensively with his swing coach, Chuck Cook, and he understands all the track man numbers that are critical for success with him as it relates to his equipment. He's told me that, look, I can't give shots away because of my equipment. How easy, or is it potentially more challenging, is it to work with a player like Jason who has such an intimate knowledge and understanding of his, his numbers and as they relate to his fittings? Well, with, with Jason, he's so precise with his golf swing and he's so precise in what he wants out of his equipment that it's very easy uh, on my side. When I know what a player wants, uh, it's very easy to fit them properly. Uh, when a you don't know what a player wants, sometimes it's a little bit more difficult. So anytime you work with Jason, like like he's trying to get 9,000 RPMs of spin on his 9-iron, he's trying to get 10,000 on his pitching wedge, he's trying to get 8,000 on his 8, 7 on his 7, and once we we hit those numbers, 
his ball flight is going to be exactly what he wants. It's going to be going in the window he's looking for, and uh, and he's going to get the shot pattern he wants with the proper distances, with the proper spin rates when it hits the green. So when you have all those things combined, it's pretty easy on my side to work with uh, yeah, because I know what he wants. I think a lot of uh, amateur players and a lot of people who watch the game on the couch assume that almost all the Titleist players are using the Pro B1X golf ball because it's really designed uh, in certain ways that we associate a lot of times with players who swing really hard, generate a lot of spin. Jason plays with the Titleist Pro B1, not the Pro B1X. Can you tell me the reason why he's in that ball as opposed to the X ball? Well, Jason's the low spin player, so uh, you know, with a low spin player, he's usually trying to get a little bit more uh, uh, spin out of his golf ball to have his ball stay in the air a little bit longer, or to be able to produce a, a certain shot pattern. Um, Adam Scott's the same way. He's a low spin player. He uses Pro V1 because uh, he's always trying to have a certain type of shot pattern. Um, so you're, you're basically matching a golf ball to a player's swing type and their spin rates versus just speed. So um, so the Pro V1 uh, fit perfect for Jason. It fits perfect for Adam, and uh, you know that's the why we have two different golf balls. Cool. I appreciate you taking a little bit of time on your busy schedule down there in Greensboro to talk about Jason Duffner's stuff. Thanks a lot today, Chris. Thank you. Appreciate it, David. Cool. All right. Once again, this is David Dusek, senior writer for Golf Week Magazine, and you've come inside the winner's circle. What's up?